Hello and welcome to part two of assigning outputs to unstable states. I am Stephen Mendes. Please subscribe to my channel for many more useful educational videos on electronics. In part one, we learnt the basis of how to assign 0, 1 or x to an unstable state in a flow table. Looking at our board now, we have six identical flow tables. Uh, the one on the upper left is the question on the test paper. And it is the student's responsibility to insert 0, 1, or x in each of the dashed squares. The squares where you have a dash after the letter. Now, based on what we learned in the last video, you would put, naturally, two x's on the first columns as shown in green. Sorry, the first column. Because you would be saying in your mind, you're moving from A through B down to row C. Okay? Or you could come to it another way. You could be in row B and you could move from the B to the C via that square. And in each case, you would be going from a 1 to a zero. Let's see if we can show you that with a pointer, shall we? Let's see if we can point to it. There we have the one and we move here and we are going down to the zero. Or in the second row we have a one and we move here and we go down to a zero. So based on those two, two decisions, you would put two x's. However, that can't be right. Why can't it be right? Because x means that we don't care. We really don't care. So if you were to put different combinations of zeros and ones to replace those x's, you would quickly see that it can't work. For example... If we put a zero in the first square on the left, let's point at it again. We put a zero there and we put a one here, which is quite legal because we just said we were going to put two X's. I'm trying to show you why it's wrong. What happens now? We move from the one to a zero, then it becomes a one and then it goes back to be a zero. Follow my pointing now. Let's do it again. One, zero, one, zero, and we have introduced a glitch shown below. We're trying to make a smooth transition from a one to a zero. We don't want glitches in there, but the glitches come about because we have crossed two X's, and two X's mean we just don't care. That's not a bad, that's a bad attitude for students to take in life. They've got to care about something. Okay, so let's see what we should have done instead. We can certainly use 1x. So if we put an x in the second uh, square as shown here, right? We must put a 1 in the top. Now we go 1, 1, and we really don't care whether it goes to a 1 or a 0 here because it will just prolong the one a little longer or it will change to the zero a little faster and ultimately we will end up at our zero. Or we can go one, one, zero, or one, zero, zero, but ultimately, as shown below in the yellow, we have a simple transition from a one to a zero. Now, suppose you put the x in the other square. And that's a perfectly valid answer. I want you to understand that's a perfectly valid answer. Here we have put the x in the top square instead of the bottom. But if we put the x in the top square, in order to avoid 
getting that one and then going back to zero, we must have a zero in the square below it. Okay? Now that works out great too because we don't really care going from here to here, but we're going to end up as a zero for the rest of the way. Likewise, we have a one, we are going to a zero, and that stays. So that's a perfectly valid solution. So just remember that you, if you put the x in the top square, you will need to correct it in the bottom by putting a zero. If you put the x in the bottom square, you'll need to correct it by putting a one in the top square. So now we've established that we have two possible correct answers that involve an x for that particular problem. Now looking at our last one, we see that <laughs> in the bottom part of the, let's go down and show you with a pointer. In the bottom part here, we have another situation where we have two and they cannot have both x. Cannot have both x. So see if you can figure it out for yourself based on what we have just said. You should be able to come up with two possible solutions for that that involve an x in either square and we leave that for you as an exercise. Finally, we want to show you that if you put zeros in all three of these, you would be correct because we are traveling here, which automatically makes that a zero. We're traveling from a zero to a zero. And up here, we're traveling here, which pushes us up to here, which brings us back down to here. But ultimately, and that brings us back up to there. So ultimately, we are traveling between this one and this one. And since there's a zero at both ends, both stable states at the ends of our cycle, students were asking about cycles. Well, this is a perfectly good example of a cycle. There is a zero. We're going to zero at the end, but we're transitioning all over the place, up and down in this column. And we need to keep that zero so that we will land firmly on a zero at the end. A cycle is when we go through several unstable states trying to move from a stable state to another stable state. So we have to have at least two or more unstable states for it to be called a cycle. Okay? So just remember, be very careful using x as you can only have one of those x's when traveling between an a 0 and 1. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.